So we come to the third move of the eight brocades, all added on, three, move, um, three forms together basically. Uh, we've got eight brocades, an 18 form Quagong sequence, and a nine form that I learned from the Himalayas up there. Again, it's just basically 35 moves, um, three forms together, a Qigong sequence. Um, doesn't really matter, I'll just explain that at the beginning, I'll put it in order. In order. You can do it in order or you can do it singly because we're going mainly into the breath. Um, not the traditional breath, done that on other tapes. We're going down the yogic Pilates and hypnotic or hypnotherapy type breathing all into one. And again, it's just breath synchronized movement. Don't get too caught up in it. Um, again, this is a nice traditional Qigong one. Lovely motion. That's why, again, you can't get too caught up in, you know, this has got to be specifically like this. Like I say, there's so many different forms of Qigong, Qigong, whatever you want to call it. And again, there's 40,000 to 100,000 different forms. So again, that gets all modelled up, the names, etc. In the, the end of the day, it's movement. Now again, as with all the traditional forms, Etc. They were going to the meridians, which I've done in other tapes. You, if you if you have a bit of noise there, that's great, but it's not necessary. It's just breath synchronized motion, um, so you can play around with it because it's movement. There's nothing, you know. There's nothing illegal about it. You know, just you got to treat it like mind candy, really. If you feel good after it, that's great. Um, you'll feel the benefits of the breath in every single organ cell, sinew the body. Obviously, this is an opening out chest one, so it's pretty obvious. That's gonna open out all the organs in the chest, the heart, the lungs, the pericardium. All gonna be benefited by opening out the chest. Um, and this one also is believed to help the liver because of the focus. It's like a focusing um, type exercise. It's like, you know, taking an arrow to shoot. Um, I was gonna say shoot the golden eagle. But um, again, yeah, it's like pulling pull narrow basically and just focusing. So again, it's linked to the eyes, we're linked to the liver on the right-hand side of the body. You'd have to know this knowledge. Again, just go with it, okay, and just see how good you feel. It's, um, again, the, the kidneys are linked, um, sorry, the, li the lungs are linked to grief, stuff like that. It's the general motions linked to each organ of the body. Um, so it will just calm down that. So let's go straight in. So zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals. Unlike a traditional Qigong form, we're going down the Pilates setup of throwing on our corset muscle, our pelvic house, our girdle of strength, three layers deep. Now the pelvic floor and the corset are linked. Okay, so I'm going down the, the Pilates principles here. You can't do one without the other. Now, if you want to sort of have a little bit of an awareness of where that is, Okay, this all supports the spine, these muscles. Um, the, the pelvic floor is linked to the corset, three layers deep. Like cling film, it links onto a corset muscle. Three layers deep is the corset muscle, which is called the transverse abdominus, lumbar thrasho fascia around the back. But again, the corset muscle is generally the transverse abdominus. Just think of it as a corset muscle. If you get your thumbs, just a little bit of awareness. Sometimes it can be a little bit like an amnesia. If you don't know these muscles are there, you can't use them in the correct fashion. If you know they're there, you can use them in the correct fashion. So thumbs here, coming around from the hips. Now that's the end of the pelvic floor, okay? Now that links on B-line, bikini line, belt line, we're gonna call that, okay? That links onto a corset muscle, three layers deep. Just all segmentally stabilizing the spine. Okay, so that just gives you an awareness of what's going on. Now, again, if you get this B line, hips, if you cough or sneeze, <coughs> everything comes in. Again, that engages that pelvic floor and the corset. Okay, so you can feel them both go together. One can't go without the other. So, but again, we go for it segmentally. So, zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals right now. Breathing through the nose in the usual Pilates manner and exhale through pursed lips. If you're sort of blowing out a candle through pursed lips, that exhale works like that cough or sneeze. <laughs> that engages their muscles. That's the Pilates usual way. 
Okay, and also as you're doing that, you'll feel that breath coming low and deep to these lower lobes of lungs, intercostals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. Because there's nowhere else for the breath to go, they, that'll go into them fish gills, 3D style, as though someone's wrapped a scarf tightly around your ribs and you're breathing to that scarf wide and full. Okay, lovely. Just adding width to the lungs and length to the out breath. As you follow the journey all the way in through the nose and down through pursed lips, you'll feel that happening. Okay, that, help, that allows us, as you zip up pelvic floor and scoop out your abdominals, because we breathe anywhere but the belly button, it helps us, that helps us use them muscles we just talked about in the most efficient manner, helping us breathe anywhere but the belly button. As you keep the shoulders down, okay, we're gonna also add in the yogic responses. So we can keep the mouth shut, change the breath, and that's gonna naturally help us lengthen the whole wheel cycle of the breath longer. Okay, you will feel that happen. That would naturally happen because it's a smaller filter through the nose, and that's gonna help us lengthen all the breath longer. Okay, so that all changes all of a sudden, because that comes slightly more yogic, that more filtering breath, cleansing breath happens. We're in the asanas, that helps us get into the postures even easier. And as you do that, you'll naturally feel the out breath want to fall longer than the in breath. Okay, so just allow that to happen. Consciously bring your mind to that out breath. Rather than the breath breathe you, you're gonna breathe the breath. That breath within the breath, as Kabir says, but we're going to the elongated out breath. Okay, in a sort of hypnotherapy type manner, 7-11 breathing, the in breath's conscious thought, the out breath is subconscious thought. So by extending the out breath longer than the in breath, you're just encouraging sleep, digestion, rest and relaxation to all be benefited. All the things you don't think about, the parasympathetic nerve system is all being benefited on the cellular level deep. Just by elongating the out breath longer than the in breath. The in breath is conscious thought, the out breath is subconscious thought. So by extending the out breath longer than the in breath, we're just encouraging the housekeeping properties of the body to be benefited on a cellular level. So again, even think about organ function, stuff like that, uh, or even cellular communication, you know, organ communication, function, assimilation, elimination, stuff like that. It's all gonna be benefited. All the things you don't think about by elongating the out breath longer than the in breath. So, Allow that to happen, quadruple it, double it, triple it, whatever you like, the out breath. Make it longer than the in breath as you're still zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals. And keeping the mouth shut as you breathe in and out through the nose. You're bringing all them yogic, hypnotic responses also. So that's gonna be perfectly good enough. If you can get the advanced breath, fine. If you can't, don't worry, just come on breathing with me. Otherwise, you're going to take on a little bit further, make that slightly more advanced yogic breath. As we still zip up pelvic floor and scoop out your abdominals, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose, you can grip your esophagus here and narrow that esophagus, and that's going to help us lengthen the whole wheel cycle of the breath. So, breathing in, the only way I can do it is demonstrating. Watch these shoulders and exhale. sort of overemphasize focusing breath. Sometimes you'll do that when you're sort of trying to focus on a fine motor skill like thread and needle, etc. It's more overemphasized focusing breath. Breathing in. And exhaling, getting that lovely, soft, silky, whistling, Raspy sound from the back of the throat. Ujjayi breath, victorious breath in Sanskrit. Seashore breathing it's called. And again, allow that sound of the breath, the feel of the breath, to weave its tapestry of relaxation and every single organ, cell, sing the body at will. Okay, allow that to manifest on a cellular level. Lovely, so that Ujjayi breath as you're doing it. If you can't get it, don't worry. Ujjayi breath or not, it doesn't matter, matter. Just carry on doing that 
zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out abdominals, in and out through the nose, while elongating the out breath. If you're doing huge dry breath, you're also going to be trying to elongate the out breath longer than the in breath without even trying or try not to try. Okay? Because that will also lengthen the breath. But you can lengthen the breath longer than the in breath with that ujjayi breath. Breathing in through the nose and exhaling as if you're going ah, with the mouth shut. You hear that raspy, silky, whistling breath from the back of the throat, ujjayi breath, victorious breath. Lovely. So you can't get that, don't worry. If you can, great. Lovely. Again, just think your breath, you can cool something down with your breath, like your dinner or something, or you can heat something up like in the winter. So again, don't, don't disbelieve what the breath can do to the body internally. Okay, that ujjayi breath will naturally help you build the heat from the body, fan the fire, burn all the toxins in the body. Lovely. If you can't get it, don't worry. Still carry on with that breath. So again, in a vinyasa, breath synchronized motion manner, uh, again, vinyasa in Sanskrit, we're going to link that to motion. We're going to calibrate and synchronize and integrate that with the Qigong motion of taking an arrow to shoot the golden eagle, or draw the arrow to let the arrow fly. So again, we're gonna. I'm gonna go back and demonstrate this. I'm gonna stick to the Iyengar yoga principles. Um, again, there's still two schools of thought. I'm gonna stick to the old school, knees and arm and toes. If you are coming in deep, as with all Koi Gong, you can go in as deep as you like with a squat. Same with any sort of energy body system. You can go in as deep as you like. Remember, make it unique to you. It's your union of your mind and body. But again, only as deep as knees and arm and toes. I won't go any further, especially if you've got really bad knee injuries. Other schools of thought. Again, I'm sticking to that. So if you want to go deeper, go tailbone deep. Only as low as you keep the knees and arm and toes. I know your back will bend a little bit. If it does, again, as long as you're not hyperextending the back, you're keeping it neutral. But going in as, as naturally, as easy, as relaxed as you find, can find it. Okay, so again, I'm going to come back sort of in a... Slightly widen squat stance, um, nearly horse riding stance, not Charlie Chaplin, not to the front, slightly out, cane of V. Again, if you want to come down knees and arm and toes, that's great. Less, centimetre, a millimetre of foot. Basically, it's here. And the exhale, nice long exhale. Let the shoulders drop. Look where you're firing that elongated exhale. Sharp on your breath and exhale. Shoulders down, lengthen up from the crown. Lovely. Again, breathing in, exhale. Nice focusing breath with a focusing motion. Look where you're putting the exhale. Coming up, again, back to hands here. Exhale, they're organic. They come up for the ground. Push up with the heels, shoulders down. Open out the chest, all the organ in the chest, the heart, the lungs, the pericardium. As you zip up pelvic floor and scoop out the abdominals, take the navel towards the spine and lengthen up for the crown. Lovely job. So we've got the fourth of the eight brocades coming next with these whole three 35 sequence coming. Um, again, it's Wise Owl next. Gazes backwards, bang. 